say a warm welcome to everybody today, and especially those that are watching online. You may be in another part of the world, or maybe you're here in Vancouver and you're watching online today. At any rate, we're really glad to have you join us, and you are part of our family, and we're glad that you're able to join us online as well. As you know, for the month of July, we have been looking at different movies, each movie bringing out a certain truth. I really do believe that Jesus would have used movies if he were uh, here today preaching in the same way, because he was a master at taking stories or parables and bringing a truth around that. Actually, really, stories are containers for truth, and it helps us to understand the truth, and it makes the truth stickier. So today, I hope the truth out of this movie we're going to use sticks with us. The movie we're going to look at uh, is called The Greatest Showman. And uh, we were going to plan to use a different movie, but as we got together and thought through where we were in our series, we, we made a little change, and we're going to use this movie, The Greatest Showman. It's an interesting story for sure. It's about P.T. Barnum, or Finnis, as was his name, referred to as P.T., and he is this amazing showman for sure. He had started the circus. He was known to be an entrepreneur, a great businessman. And he also was a politician for a time. So he did a lot of things and was actually very successful in it. He grew to success, but as he grew to success, pride began to creep into his life. And when pride crept into his life, the very thing that he really loved and cherished began to slip away from him. You see, you can be very courageous. And courage is simply, I'm going to do something great to help other people. Whereas pride is, I'm going to do something for me. It's about me and it's about my show. And this movie gives us some really, really valuable lessons about how to avoid pride. Because ultimately, pride will kill true courageous acts and endeavors. And it almost destroyed his life. So I want to take a lesson some, look at some of the lessons out of his, uh, out of his story, out of this movie. A um, couple things. One thing that we'll learn from this is to never lose touch with reality. That's one of the first things we'll learn from this. A little bit of background before our first clip. Uh, P.T., as he was known, grows up in poverty. He falls in love with a girl by the name of Charity, who comes from a very well-heeled family in New York. And... Uh, He's fatherless after when he's a young man, and he really grows up on the streets, and, but he stays in touch with charity. And uh, he, his goal is to, is to win her heart, and he does. And he ends up marrying her, much to the disgust of his father-in-law. His father-in-law didn't want his daughter to be marrying him, never thought he'd amount to much. And that sticks with him, and he, he sets out, I'm going to prove them wrong. I am going to be something out of my life. He works at different jobs and uh, has some success. As he's working at this particular job, they go bankrupt, and as a result of it, he loses his job. And any time a man loses his job and comes home, there's a bit of like, what am I going to tell my family? And he comes home one day, and he's having to tell his wife that he's lost his job. And in this, in this clip, she gives him some wisdom and really helps frame the movie, because in essence, she's trying to communicate to him P.T., this is what's really important to us. This is the real thing. Don't lose this. So with that, let's watch this first clip. So she's in this clip. She's reminding him of what's really important. Look around. Look at these two girls. Look what we have. There's something inside of him that he really wants, and it's a good thing. He wants to provide. He wants to give them the dream, and he's, he's going to be a hardworking man to make that happen. There's a point that, again, I just want to come back to. She's encouraging him. This is a real thing. This is reality. This is life. We have this. We never want to lose that. I had a friend of mine, he was a well-known uh, Bible teacher, and early in his career, he sat down with a very well-known minister, and they were having this dinner, dinner together, and he, he wanted to get some wisdom from him on how to be successful, and so he said, you know, if you could give me one tip, just one tip on how to be a success and to, to stay a success, what would you tell me? And he got his, his pen out, he brought a pad and paper with him, and he, as the gentleman was going to speak, the man says to him, well, never lose touch of reality, and so he writes it out, never lose touch of reality, and then he looks up, he goes, yeah. He goes, no, no, that's it. 
I said, never lose touch with reality. Yeah, I got that. What's next? He goes, no, that's it. Never lose touch with reality. And uh, he said, that's all he gave me was just that one point. But he said, I've never forgot it. That uh, in all that I do, I should never lose touch with what's really important with reality. Instead of being caught up with all the glitter and the glam and fame and all the rest of it, just what's real. It reminds me of a verse where Jesus talks about what the Father wants. He says, the Father desires worship, but the worship must be its spirit and truth. It must be authentic. It must be real. And wouldn't you agree we have a generation that's saying, I just want something authentic. I want it real. Well, after this loss of job, P.T. goes to work, and he starts the American Museum. Through trial and error, he figures out what the public really likes. His daughters help him on this as well, and, and he has a display of 850,000 items in this big museum. He borrows money to make it happen. And in there, he has all kinds of things on display, exotic animals, but also on display are people. He's criticized for it in some respects, but he had people that were tall, very tall. He had Tom Thumb. He was known as Tom Thumb, man who's very short. And people came to see people that had these oddities, and they became actually a very close family because P.T. Uh, would accept them and valued them and, and, and paid them very well. So there was this kind of unique family that developed there. His, his, his museum, which ended up becoming the circus, uh, would have 4,000 customers a day at 25 cents a piece. He was making a lot of money in the day. And so finally, this entrepreneur, this boy who came out of poverty, is encountering success. Inside of him was this desire, I want to be accepted by high society in New York. They, they thumb their nose at me, and I'm going to show them that I'm a somebody. And so he works really hard to get there. And uh, he, he's entering something that's dangerous ground. The Bible makes it pretty clear that pride is very dangerous. The problem with pride is it's hard to spot. Now, you can spot it in others pretty easy, but it's hard to spot it in yourself. Everybody else has pride, but we don't have pride. The others have pride. Pride has this weird way of distorting our lenses, and it changes our reality. It discolors things. It doesn't happen instantly because if it happened very quick, we'd recognize it. But slowly, pride creeps in. Our enemy is a very crafty trapper, and he doesn't trap us right away. He doesn't say, pride, pride, come get pride. Well, of course, we'd stay away. But very slowly, he, he, he lures us in. And P.D. doesn't realize it, but he's lured into pride. And slowly, he's losing sight of reality. Somebody once said this, never let pride be your guide. Stay humble or you'll stumble. That pretty well summarizes up the message. There's a verse in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, and here's what it says. When you do things, we all do things. When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. That's a good verse just to meditate on today, even those watching online. Whatever you're doing, don't let pride be your guide. What happened to P.T., pride was becoming his guide. If I'm just recognized, if I get this ovation, if they'll recognize, if they'll, if they'll notice me, then I'll be a somebody, and I will do whatever it takes to be noticed. In our world of Instagrams and selfies and so forth, we have a lot of, hey, look at me, I want to be noticed. And this is where PT was headed. The Bible gives us instruction, instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. I'm going to agree, that's counterculture. We, we're looking at, no, I want to give me honor. I want to post me, like me, look at me, notice me. I want the corner office. I want success. I want to have a better car, bigger this, better that. Look at me. And so the Bible gives us a different instruction here. Well, this desire can literally destroy our lives. And as the story unfolds, this is beginning to happen to Barnum. After buying that old building, starting the circus, he finds that no matter how hard he tries, he's still not really accepted by high society, even though he's starting to make a lot of money. He gets to the place where he has enough success that he's actually invited to go to visit the queen and see her. So that's, you've kind of arrived, I would think. That, sh that should satisfy you to be accepted. I got to go see the queen. When he's there, he meets 
an amazing singer, a Swedish singer by the name of Jenny Lind. And uh, he thinks, this will do it. People see me really just displaying the circus, and they think I'm a con artist and all these things, and I've entertained them. But I'm going to give them one of the greatest singers of all times, and I'll bring her to America. He's a master at marketing. He brings this famous Swedish singer to America named Jenny Lind, and things just take off. And she becomes this great success. And there's a point in the movie where you can really taste the struggle that P.T. has when who shows up in the after party of one of her performances but his father-in-law, and uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of bitterness there. And you can see the work that's happening in P.T.'s heart in this clip. So as he exits high society, the father in you can see the strain on that. And, and in this time, here's Barnum, and he, he's struggling with his identity. And, you know, there's an important verse in the Scriptures where it talks about, let our identity be in Christ. Let that be our identity, instead of the perception of what other people think about us. If we live our life keeping our happiness in other people's heads, we're never going to be successful. And that was his desire. I've, I've got to make these people happy. I've got to impress them. I've got to keep doing more and more. And, and then I'll be liked, and then I'll be accepted. Then I will be a somebody. And as a result of it, P.T. begins to live this superficial life, which is my next point that we can take out of this movie, is never allow your heart to become superficial. God's looking for authentic worship, but worship is more than coming to a service and raising our hands and singing. Worship is more than bowing down. Worship is actually the way we work, the way we live, the way we serve. For the Bible says, whatever you do, do heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. The way we live should be an act of worship, to live authentically, not superficially, not silver-plated, but to be the real thing through and through. And the more he goes along, the more P.T. Barnum begins just to have this outward act. And he leaves behind that close family of those people that helped him be a success at that circus in the early days. And he, he leaves behind his wife and children to go on the road. He misses the ballet practice. He misses being with his family. And it's all because he's driven for more glitter, more success, more fame, more money, more fortune. Look at me. It takes him away from the very thing that he really loved in the first place. There's always a price to pay when we give in to pride. When pride rules in our actions, we become superficial as we're more concerned with others' perceptions of us than the reality of what's inside of our heart. And this is what happens to him. He's going on the road. The Jenny Lynn tour is happening. He wants to be there. And he's about to set off. And at one point, Charity, his wife, says to him, she's trying again get him to think about reality. And she says to him, when will it ever be enough for you? And there's people in our own city, in our own lives, in our, maybe in our own congregation here, that we need to stop with it. When is it going to be enough? How much do I need to really be fulfilled, content? So let's watch this next clip where she challenges him with this thought. When will it be enough for you? So in that scene, she's challenged, when will it be enough for you? She says to him, I, I, I'm sure you caught that line, you don't need everyone to love you, just a few good people. Isn't that a powerful line? And sometimes we're looking for, you know, that person just loved me or that person would just like me. And we're looking for what I would call the glitter or the bling bling when the gold is right in front of you. And, and we miss it. And we see that happen in church. Oh, if I, if I could just go there, go there, and they'll, they'll wander away from their church family and then one day they realize, why did I leave? Why did I leave my life group? Why did I wander away? That's where the gold was. That's where the relationships were. That's where the life was. One of the four big things we do at Coastal Church is small groups because that's where we have family. That's where we have this, this bond, this friendship. It might not be bling bling. We might not be eating at the fanciest restaurants. It might be at the park. It might be in somebody's home. It might be at a school, on a bus, but it's family. And our enemy would try to say, oh, if you just have this, if you watch this advertisement, that person being happy, they're fulfilled because they're driving this, going there, doing that. And, and he tries to lure us away. And, and pride is a very seductive force that creeps in. No wonder God warns us so many times about that. 
After all, it's what caused Satan to fall was pride. So it's one of his master tools. And we have to be very aware. The Bible says, be aware. Your enemy prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And more people have been devoured by pride perhaps than anything else. And it almost takes down Barnum, pride, as he's lured into going after these things. He's chasing after them. There's a verse in Psalm that says, Psalm 127, It's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives his beloved sleep. What this verse is saying is, really, it's addressing Barnum's situation. He's up early, he's late, he's not with his family, he's on the road, one more, one more concert, one more this, one more that, a little more money, a little more fame, another newspaper, and then, I, then I'll be what I wanted to be. And he never gets it. It always just appears. When you're there, it's, it just, Satan moves the goalposts further down. You never arrive at that. He says, you'll eat the bread of sorrows. The bread of sorrows are this. I've lost my friends. I've lost my family. What do I do now? Aren't you glad we have a, a father that welcomes home the prodigals? I'm so glad that if we've, we've, if we've done that, he says, come home. And he's saying that today, come home. If pride is drawing you away, come home. I'm welcoming you here. The family's always here for you. The door's never closed. The fire's on. Come home. Don't eat the bread of sorrows. He gives his beloved sleep. That simply means that you don't have to worry, work about, I will give you rest. He gives us rest to our soul, not just physical, but spiritual rest as well. In Philippians 2, verse 3 and 4, we have another verse of instruction where it says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Do nothing, nothing out of selfish ambition. And selfish ambition was driving Barnum to have more and to be more. Which leads me to the third point that we can learn from the movie, and that is this. It is a spiritual law. Pride will lead to a fall. Uh, there is a law of gravity. If you go on top of a building and jump, you are going to fall, right? That law is in effect. The sun's going to rise tomorrow morning. The sun will set. There's certain laws. As much as there are natural laws, there are spiritual laws. <clears throat> and wherever you see pride, it will lead to a fall. In our, in our next scene, he's returning from the tour with Jenny Lind, this famous singer. And as he comes back, he's come back early for a number of reasons. You can, if you've watched the movie, you know what the reasons are. But he comes back early, and when he comes back, he finds his museums on fire. And pride is closing the door on what he really loves the most. Destruction setting in. And so let's watch this clip to see what happens as pride is working its way into his life. It's a spiritual law that pride will lead to a fall. She says to him in that scene, you're just in love, in love with you and your show. It's all about you. Going back to that verse where our scripture tells us, do nothing out of selfish ambition. In Proverbs 16, verse 18, there's a great verse. You may have heard of it before, pride goes before destruction. His, his building was destroyed, his marriage is being destroyed. A haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 11, 2, pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. One of the reasons you get wisdom with humility is because you ask, how do I do it better? Pride says, I know how to do it myself, it's about me. And he's at the place where his, all he has really wanted is disappearing. The door is slamming on the relationship with his family and those that are closest to him. There's another good verse that ties into this where it says in 1 Timothy 6, verse 10, for the love of money, notice it doesn't say money, just make sure we understand this, it's the love of money, because money is morally neutral. You can use it for good or you can use it for evil. It's often misquoted, this verse, where people say money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. It's the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's through this craving that some, not all, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. So we, it's possible. You can have things. You can have money. You can have great success and not be caught up in pride. So you don't have to take the poverty ditch. You can, you can be successful. Just don't allow pride to come in. It's not about you and your show. It's about serving other people. That's what courage is. So the Bible warns us about that. 
Which really leads us to the last point. I want to wrap up with this. Number four is simply this. Change only comes when we don't forget what is important to us, when we remember what is important. And at this point, P.T. is beginning to realize what's really important to him. And he go, begins to look at his family around him, his natural family, but also this family of, of caste that came and supported him, that believed in him as he believed in them. And they really were a family in those early years. He'd close the door on them to select the high society. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but it's happened to me, where I thought I had a friend, I introduced them to somebody else that they thought was knew a few more people, a little bit better than I was, and they said, thanks, Dave, now I'm going to hang out with this person. Maybe that's happened to you. And he was doing that to a lot of people. And now he realizes, I am missing my real friends and my real family, and I need to get back to them. And so he, at this point, he... He goes back to his wife, and she's been staying now at her parents' house. The hardship that he went through, and this is the strange thing about hardship and trials, it leads us closer to God, and it actually leads us closer to our family. And our theme for this year is closer. We don't want trials or tribulation, but yet in the book of James it says, consider all joy when you encounter trials, because it produces endurance and faith. It's a time we reach out to God, and it's a time we reach out to really those who are the goal, the family in our life. And this is what happens in this last scene we want to show you. That's a great last line there, from now on. And you, do you hear his, the humility in his voice? I should have never brought this hardship on our family, on you. I was trying to be something I wasn't. You know, one of the best lessons is you be you. Don't be somebody else. You be you. Be the God who... Be the person God created you to be. Be complete in Him. And from then on, he begins to work on restoring his family. And things change for him. And I wonder today if we need to just take a lesson from P.T. Barnum and say, from now on, from today on, where we search our own hearts, say, God, is there pride creeping into my life? I'm aware of today's message. That I might not be able to spot it on my own. So, Holy Spirit, would you show me if there's pride, if, there's, if that's crept into my life, I don't want a fall. I don't want destruction. That's a spiritual law. I don't want that to happen to my life. So, would you point that out? And from now on, I want to come home. From now on, I want to be in relationship with you, and I want to keep my relationship sweet with those you brought into my life. Mm. There's a point in the movie where Barnum says, a man learns who is there for him when the glitter fades and the walls won't hold, because from that rubble what all remains can only be what's true. If all was lost, there more I gain, because it led me back to you. And uh, so sometimes when we're going through challenging situations, it leads us back to those who really cared for us. But in our situation, it also leads us back to this relationship with our Heavenly Father. And that is the back to Genesis. That is back to Him. And so pride keeps us from Him. Pride keeps us from this relationship with God. I can do it on my own. I don't need you, God. Thanks very much. But when we humble ourselves, the Bible says He gives grace to the humble. And so grace is extended toward us today. And I want to say a prayer as we wrap up. We're going to be taking communion in just a moment. But I want to pray with us today here and those that are watching online Maybe pride has crept in, or maybe you feel like from now on, I want to make some changes. I want to come back into this sweet relationship with God and even relationship with others. But I need to humble myself and say, God, would you please allow me to have this relationship with you and this relationship with others? I, I take kind of a, an account of my life, and if there's pride, I want to put that aside to walk humbly before God and before others. So let's take a moment to pray. I invite you to bow your heads and Let's pray this out loud together. And those of you online, just pray along with us. And here today, we'll all pray. It's a simply a prayer to humble ourselves before God and receive what He's done for us and accept Him into our lives and to value that relationship and the relationships of others. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today I open up my heart. I humble myself before You. God, I need You. I need others in my life. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. I accept what Jesus did when he died on the cross 
for my sins that I could have life. In Jesus' name, amen.